Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with what to expect with the Samsung Galaxy S4. So we're only a couple months away from the release date, and already we have quite a bit of information on what could very well be the best phone of the year, so let's take a look. When I reviewed the HTC Droid DNA recently, I was a big fan of the screen, which was also a 5-inch 1080p display. So on the Galaxy S4, this means a couple things. For starters, it's going to be a little bit bigger than the Galaxy S3, while still keeping much, much smaller than the Note 2, which means that while you get a little bit more screen real estate, it's not going to be anywhere near as big, so you can still fit it in your pocket and all that kind of stuff. But more important than that is that 1080p resolution, which looks absolutely fantastic. Now sometimes it's not going to be extremely noticeable, 720p screens are still very good, but overall that 1080p gives you a lot more crispness and clarity in text, especially in pictures and video. You get a lot more pixels and a lot more definition in that screen. Powering the phone should be the new Samsung Exynos Octa processor. Now they recently announced this on CES, and the gist of it is, is that it is an 8 core CPU for a phone. So I'll just actually just let that sink in for a second. 8 cores, which is more than probably your laptop or desktop has, in your phone. I'm okay with this. This works a little bit differently than a normal CPU. So instead of being an 8-core processor, imagine that it's a pair of quad-core CPUs built into the same phone. So on one hand, you have a quad-core CPU, which is still going to be plenty fast, but it's going to be a lot easier on your battery. So for example, when you're doing normal tasks, like checking Twitter, email, Facebook, that kind of thing, the phone will be using this more power-efficient processor. But when you need more heavy lifting, for example, gaming or anything that's going to be some really intense kind of, you know, where it needs some graphical horsepower, it will switch over to the second part of the CPU, which is going to be a lot more powerful, but it's also going to take up a lot more battery. So basically this is kind of a best of both worlds approach. On one hand you have a half of the CPU I guess you could say. It's going to be more for like normal kind of use where it's not going to be really heavy on your battery. But when you need that extra power it is there for you. Software wise I fully expect Android 4.2 Jellybean to be on board. Now Jellybean has been out for about 3 or 4 months now and by the time that the Galaxy S4 does launch I do expect that Samsung will have enough time to add all the awesome new features like the new camera app, the new lock screen, that kind of thing. Now beyond that there are also some more miscellaneous things that we've heard including wireless charging support right out of the box which definitely should be cool. We should see some upgrades to the camera as well. So the Galaxy S3 has an 8 megapixel sensor. I wouldn't be surprised to see this upped to 10 to 12 on the Galaxy S4. And more than likely it will stick with 1080p video. Although who knows, they actually may be able to figure out a way to get 4K onto the phone. Now that will be awesome. Of course with that 8 core CPU you got a lot of horsepower. But it's kind of a long shot. We'll see. Now while I love how the Galaxy S3 fits in the hand and how lightweight it is, it is definitely made out of plastic pretty much through and through. And while it's great to be able to remove the back panel to swap your battery, your SIM card, your SD card, that kind of thing, it would be nice if they were able to make it just a little bit more premium feeling. So either make the plastic a little bit thicker, maybe get a little bit of a different finish, or who knows, maybe even put some metal in there. As far as when you can get your hands on the Galaxy S4, it's rumored that it will be announced somewhere in late March or early April for a mid to late April release. So of course that is going to vary depending on where you live in the world. So for the Galaxy S3 it was announced and it took about two or three months before it actually hit the United States and everywhere else in the world. But regardless, we're actually not that far from seeing the Galaxy S4 in person. So that leads me to a question. What do you guys think about the Galaxy S4? I used to use the S3 and now I use the Note 2, so I'm very, very interested to see exactly what Samsung has been able to cook up for the Galaxy S4. So definitely let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about the Galaxy S4 and what do you guys want to see in the next version of the Samsung flagship? If you guys are interested in more, feel free to check out the playlist of all kinds of great phones that I've been reviewing recently. So that includes the HTC Droid DNA, the Galaxy Note 2, and all kinds of really high-end awesome phones that you guys may want to take a look at. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up, and if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I will catch you guys next time. You'll also find the 5.5 inch Super AMOLED display, which supports a resolution of 1280 by 720. The rest of the phone is fairly standard, with a micro USB port on bottom, and volume rockers and a sleep weight button on either side.